Hello everybody and welcome to this session about what's new in Instant Search. I'm Harun and for the last six and a half years I've worked on teams that make the best search experience accessible for everybody who's using Algolia. One of the things that we've made available to you is Instant Search. Instant Search is a set of libraries available for different frameworks on the web as well as on mobile that make up different building blocks to create amazing search experiences. What do I mean by those building blocks? Well, you have, for example, the search box to set the query, the hits to display the results, then the filters to refine those results instantly, as well as pagination to find the results, even if they are very weird. So let's talk about what's new in instant search. The first item that I want to talk about is optimistic UI. And for that, we need to take a step back about what a lot of people appreciate about Algolia. And that is that Algolia is fast. It's always been very fast and it's been part of our DNA. However, there is an edge case, and that is the internet isn't always fast. And Algolia is still based on the internet. If you are, for example, in the metro, the internet can be very slow, no matter how close we put our servers. There is, however, a solution. That's optimistic UI. Whenever we make a change, and this change requires a network request, we don't necessarily wait until the network request resolves to update the UI, but we will assume what the result will be of the next network request and apply it already. So what's that look like? Let's first look at what the experience without of domestic UI is. That's this. When you click on appliances, a network request starts. Once the network request comes back, we will update the page again. This time, with the filters that are available after appliances is refined, with appliances showing as refined, and its hits, of course. Now, with optimistic UI, it looks somewhat different. First, it's of course the same. But as soon as appliances is clicked, it is now shown as refined. We're assuming, we're optimistically assuming that appliances will be refined when the network request comes back. Then, once it comes back, we update the page again, this time with the correct hits and the correct facets. This shows people that something has happened instantly when they're clicking, and they don't need to wait around. They know that something is happening. So how does this work under the hood? Well, a search experience is built up of two pillars. First, the search results. This is used for rendering. This is used as the source of truth, as which facets are available, which hits are available, etc. On the other hand, we have the search state. That is which facets are currently refined, what is the current query, what is the current page, etc. There's actually another layer of state underneath this, and that is the state inside the results. Whenever we get the new search results, we use the state of when this results was made to build up the search result. Then to introduce optimistic UI, what we are doing now is replacing this new search state whenever there is a state change with the current state. So let's look at the diagram again and see what's happening. As soon as you refine something, as soon as there is a change happening, we're rendering again, but now with the new state, no longer with the state which is associated to the result which is displayed. Then once the result comes back, we are completely in sync again and the results and the state are the same. There's actually a step further that we can go, and that is to do with errors. When an error happens, what we actually want to do is revert to the last valid state. We do not want to show appliances checked when that's not actually the state that you're seeing because an error happened. So what do we do? We actually save the last valid search state, and this is then replaced whenever there's an error. So what's this look like? Well, we have loaded the page and now we no longer have internet. 
we click on appliances and optimistically it's assumed they're fine. Then once an error happens, it's reverted. We are back at the state which matches the results. Not only did this update the UI, but this, for example, also updated the URL so that everything is completely in sync whenever there's an error. Fun fact, this works for every widget, not only our built-in widgets, but also your community and self-made widgets. Because they rely completely on the search results to render, just like our widgets, everything will work out of the box and you will need to change any code for this to work. The next topic that I want to talk about is modern templating. Templating in InstanceRJS has been always a feature and very important. But we are now introducing the next generation of templating. If we compare initially the previous templating on the left with the modern templating on the right, we don't yet see so many differences. But under the hood, already a lot is different. Hogan templates, the previous library used, actually under the hood, get turned from HTML as a string to HTML as a string. This then gets injected into the document. With the new templating built on top of HTM, we actually turn the HTML as a string into real HTML elements. These then get introduced into the rest of the application and work much more efficiently. But it's not just under the hood changes, because the things that you can see have also changed. The first thing we'll talk about is components. In the previous highlighting solution, what you had to do is rely on our specific helper and pass those parameters. This is not very discoverable. With the new templating, what we can do is interpolate, check out the components, get autocomplete, get validation and just choose the correct arguments out of the box, normal JavaScript. The next item, which is notably different is control flow. In Hogan, control flow is mustache based. We had a lot of questions on how this worked and honestly, it looks fairly complicated. Thanks to modern templating, we can now have real JavaScript inside the interpolations. This allows us to call regular methods like map, regular methods like join, like if, like whatever you want. Especially complicated conditions, you will really like what this brings for clarity in your templates. The next item I think is probably the most important, that is event handlers. Event handlers work totally different in HTM. They now add real event handlers that are allowed to be JavaScript, unlike the previous event handlers, which had to be added as DOM attributes and thus had to use globals and JavaScript as a string with all of the complications that come with that. You can see that the way in which we send insights events with send event versus the, hel the insights helper is totally different and much simpler now. A bonus of this change is that now we also accept JS6 made with Preact in the template directly. Let's zoom in a little bit on those events that I just mentioned. We have further simplified the ways that you send events. But what events do I mean? What are specifically insights events? Well, insights events are network requests that get sent whenever you see uh, the page, whenever you click on an item, whenever you refine. These network requests, they are insights events. And those insights events allow us to create a feedback loop because when we can link the actions of a user, whether they clicked on an item or whether they even bought it with the search result that brought them there, that allows us to create a couple of different items that are really exciting. First, A-B testing. A-B testing allows you to compare two completely different settings and see which one performs better. And those events are needed to see whether something performs or not. 
Also, recommend is based on events. Recommend gives the user access to specific items without a query that will match their affinities. Next, and probably most exciting, is our new vector search engine. It ha has put real artificial intelligence in our search engine. Now, as everybody knows, artificial intelligence needs lots of data to work with. Now, this data is coming from your own insights events. So let's look a little bit deeper into which code is used to make this happen. First, let's look at what we regularly would have needed to send insights events. First, we set up instant search as usual with all of its options, and then we set up some hits as well. This is nothing special. After that, we set up the insights library. This is a separate library, which is specifically made to send those insights requests. So that instant search is not directly linked to insights. Then this library needs to be instantiated. It needs to be added to instant search, needs to be linked together. Only then you can send network requests. Now this is completely simplified. First, all of the setup is now behind a single option. Insights, as soon as you set it to true, will load the insights library, set it up for use, and set it up so that it's linked with instant search. Then you can still send your regular network requests as you want. Of course, we're also sending now more events by default. Let's talk a little bit more about how we got to this API. One thing that we're always working at when we're working on the front-end experiences team is try to create the best DX possible. But what is the best DX? What is the best developer experience? Let's take a step back and look what we have as a schema. When we want to connect instant search to sending events, we need to create a couple of links. We need to load the insights library, initialize the client, initialize the middleware, as well as finally sending those events. The easiest probably would have been to do everything automatically, to load the library automatically, set up the user token automatically, set up the middleware automatically, and send those events automatically. However, we do not want to send events completely out of the box. We want our developers to be in control and to decide when they want to send those events themselves. Therefore, this is all behind a single insights option. We will no longer need to rely on knowing what the insights middleware is, but they can set insights to true whenever they want, and they can even conditionally set it to false. That's why we came up with the API of setting insights as an option and not as simply the middleware and still sending those events whenever you want. This is available today, but there is a couple of changes that we needed to do to the insights library so that we can make this as automatic as possible. And these changes are related to the user token. The user token is required on every insights event, and that is to be able to send actual useful information based on the session. You do not want to know, or you do not want to forget that when you click on two different items, that this is done by the same person. So the user token is required. There is already an option to set an anonymous user token in Search Insights, but it was linked to the cookie. So only when you have the cookie enabled, there was an anonymous user token. This is now decoupled, again, to make it as simple and as straightforward as possible for everybody to start sending as many events as possible. 
Now you will always have a user token and it will be saved across the session without using cookies. However, note that it could still be very interesting to send your own user tokens if you have those available so that you will be able to link cross-session information together. All of this is available in Instant Search JS, React Instant Search hooks, and View Instant Search. As a recap, here's a couple of things that we have introduced over the last couple of months. We have introduced optimistic UI so that your experiences work much better on low network conditions or even just anticipated network conditions. Then we have improved the way that templating works in InstanceRJS to now be completely amazing. Finally, we have severely simplified how events get sent from InstanceSearch and will make it much easier for you to have these great insights and capabilities. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you build with Instant Search. I'm available for any answers on the chat, or you can also find me online otherwise. Have a great rest of the conference.